Good afternoon. A happy Sunday, a blessed Sunday, everyone. You can hear me okay? Yes. Where are the rest of the people? We call them for it now in Jesus' name. <laughs> San Mansila. Okay, so before we get started, I'd like to do some quick announcements as uh, you guys are used to do this. So anyway, announcements. Um, so today is July 17. I don't know if you guys got one of these, but it shows you our schedule for our services. And today at 4 o'clock, then next week, July 24, it's still going to be at 4 o'clock. But then July 31 is going to be at 1.30 p.m. So make sure you come at 1.30, not at 4 o'clock. We've had people who came at 4. So again, say 1.30 on July 31st. Yes, July 31st. Okay, great. So um, the next ones, I just want to do this real quick. We have Wisdom Kids. So just so you know, um, we have those little ones up there, right? And we have teachers that are busy um, taking care of them, teaching them good stuff, right? So we can, you can, moms and dads and, and, and uh, guardians can listen and actually hear the word. So that's that if you have a child age 3 to 10, I would say 3 to 10, and you want to register them, please just go to the registration table and register your child next. Tonight, we're having our wisdom groups. Yay! Yay! Yes! And pizza and soda and what else? And water and coffee. <laughs> so please make sure after this service, we end at 6 o'clock. Uh, we start our wisdom groups at 6.30 until 7.30. Have dinner here. Yes, you can have your dinner if pizza is okay for dinner with, uh, for you guys. Um, but yeah, 6.30 to 7.30 is just an hour of having conversation with smaller groups. So you can ask questions, share your learnings, and go deeper with the Word. Okay, next. Wisdom Water Baptism. This is going to be, our very first one is going to be scheduled in August. Okay, uh, we don't have a date yet, but the target is the first or the second Saturday of August. Okay, and because we do different, we, in Wisdom Church, we do things differently. It's going to be at nighttime. Isn't that wonderful? I'm not joking. Yes, it's going nighttime to be. Nighttime baptism <laughs> in a lake in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> sa ano, sa, sa ang lake well, we're still in uh, we're, 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 we're going to call it, it's, this is coined. It's called uh, Wisdom BNB. What's B and B? It's not Air and B. B and B. It's wisdom, baptism, and barbecue. And barbecue. <laughs> it's a celebration. Only for those who are signing up, okay, and those who hasn't done their baptism yet. Bakal malat kayo mag sign up. <laughs> but yes, we're only taking in maybe ten people for the baptism. But no, seriously, it's going to be at six p.m. But it's um few hours before that, from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m., we will do teachings, right, in that location already. So it's going to be outdoor, um, so you can wear your shorts and stuff. And then at 6 o'clock, you do the baptism, right? So, and that's going to be in Acropolis, just, you know, right across Eastwood. We will give you the final schedule, but that's the plan, everyone. That's the plan. So again, if you haven't had your baptism, but you have received Jesus as your Lord and Savior already, but you haven't experienced baptism, baptism is not a requirement for salvation, okay? I just want to make sure that's clear. But it is your public declaration of your faith. So um, I want to encourage you to do that if you haven't done that. Um, next. By the way, we have our website. We have announced this uh, last time, our wisdomchurchofmanila.org. So it's up already. Yes, thank you. And, and with that as well, we have our YouTube channel, Wisdom Church of Manila. So you can go to YouTube and look for um, Wisdom Church of Manila. So if you are, um, you know, you miss a service, you, you wanted to uh, listen to the recordings, it's up there. You know, all of the, at least from the beginning until now, all of the, the Sunday services is already uploaded and recorded so you can listen to them so it's there. Yes, that's, that's how it looks like. Um, the next, 
I just want to mention this. Now fate is. Who's part of now fate is? Uh huh. So before we became a church, we started as a ministry. That's the ministry right there. Now fate is. And I just want to mention this for those of you who are not familiar with it. Again, it's a ministry. And we started this in、um, January 18 of 2020. So it's over two years ago. I just want to let you know. There's a lot of learnings in Wisdom Church, and there's so much more learnings in Now Fate is. If you go to our、um, YouTube, yeah, it's in YouTube. We have, I would say, a, approximately 140 videos, right? Approximately 210 hours of learning for you. Now, if you watch that eight hours a day, nonstop, Seven days a week, it's going to take you 26 days to watch all of the content. One month. Now, assuming you don't stop for eight hours a day. But that's, that's how much we have,、um, at least in our faith is. And then you add that to Wisdom Church of Manila. You can't say you don't know, right? You can't use that excuse. I don't know. Because there's a lot of information out there, there's a lot of knowledge out there. I think we have a microphone that's on, maybe. That's,、uh, anyway, so,、uh, oh, last one. We are looking for volunteers and still are looking for volunteers. If you're led by the Holy Spirit to serve with us,、uh, let us know, especially in the music,、um, music team. We need singers, we need musicians.、Um, if you're going to sing, you have to、uh, upload a song, right? Ano ba yung song, RV? Loving you. Hindi ako kakanta, pero loving you, you have to send, Arby, send sample, a recording、sample. of that song. <laughs> wag na, wag na. Baka mag-uwi ang sila. We can actually post a, no, a sample of that. <laughs> okay, you know what? Let's do this.、Uh, Wisdom for Successful Living. This is our series, and I just want to see the schedule、um, for all the topics. So, July 17, today, right? Pursuits of Excellence. Now, next week, we're going to be talking about relationships and people's skills. July 31st is the purpose for wisdom in business. Pastor Saldi is going to be talking about this. Everybody's looking forward to that one. Very special one. Don't miss it, right? July 31st. August 7th, we have excellence in marriage. And then August 14th, excellence in parenting. August 21, journey to real success. 28, God's prerequisite for wealth. And then the last one is September 4th, the rest. Of faith. So those are the topics. And again, as, as I say, it's not a buffet. Church, it's not a buffet. Don't just pick and choose and say, okay, this, is, this sounds good. I'm going to go to this one. But the next one, maybe I can skip. I don't need that, right? You may be single right now. So maybe you're thinking, I don't need parenting. I don't need marriage. But listen, in the future, you will. May not be your own kids, right? Niece, nephew. Grandchildren in the future, right? But listen, this is not a buffet, so I would like to encourage you to come and just listen and be fed with the word. Anyway, so again, pursuit of excellence. By the way, I just have to say, you know, there's a difference between watching online and being here. Do you agree?、Yes. Right? There's a big difference, and the anointing is different, the presence of God is different. So, if you can come, and especially those, I'm, I'm being recorded right now. If you can come, come, because there's a different anointing when uh, uh, believers right, gather together with that expectancy, with that like,、um, faith together. That's powerful. So, come if you can. And, and、um, you know what? I just have to say, there are people who are so hungry for the word that even though they're from outside Metro Manila, they come. They come. So, again, no excuse, right? We have our mom and dad almost every Sunday from Batangas, guys. Batangas, they come all the way from Batangas here to listen to the word. And we have,、uh, well, I see Brian and Evie right now, huh? We have people from Kabiti, Aisha and, oh, they're volunteering, right? Aisha and Emman are here. They're volunteering. They're from Kabiti. We have people from Baguio. They, they come here twice a month. 
They put it in their schedule to come from Baguio just to come to church. So I just want to ask, how hungry are you for the Word of God? Because there's no excuse if you're hungry. Anyway, let's pray. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for today. Lord, we praise you and we glorify you. And thank you for, uh, for this day, for blessing this day, Lord. God, Holy Spirit, we acknowledge you. You are our teacher, Lord. Teach us today your word. Give us your revelation, Lord. Revelation that we need to change our circumstances, that we need to break through in our lives. Lord, I just speak our spiritual eyes and our spiritual ears to be open today to receive your revelations, Lord, to receive your teachings. I come against any doubt. I come against any distractions from us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Okay, so again, pursuits of excellence. Let's start with defining what excellence is, right? So what is excellence? Excellence is to extend beyond the limits, right? It's to do more than what is expected of you to be. The other words for excellence is, I would say, extraordinary and superior. Extraordinary and superior. Now, this topic on excellence is, I believe a very necessary topic. It's a necessary conversation inside the church, right? Not outside attending, you know, a seminar for personal development, right? Not outside when you attend a business, you know, seminar, right? It, ne it's, it needs to be talked about here inside the church. Because anybody... If anybody ought to teach the world, if anybody ought to show the world, right, what and how to flow in excellence, it should be the church. Do you agree? It should be us. It should be the believers. Now, let me start with 1 Peter 2, 9. And I'm going to read two versions for you, the Amplified Version and the King James. Let me start with the Amplified Version. It says, but you are a chosen race. Talking about you and I, right? Your chosen race, a royal priesthood, a dedicated nation, God's own purchase, special people, that you may set forth the wonderful deeds and display the virtues and perfections of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Now, that's the AMPC. Allow me to read the King James Version. It says, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. It means you're special, right? That you should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. There's so much into this, right? And again, it's talking about you and I as believers. What is this talking about? The Bible says that we, you and I, are chosen race, chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, special. You are special. You are set apart. That's what the Bible says. Now, attached to this identity that we have in Christ is this. It says that you may set forth the wonderful deeds and display the virtues and perfections of him. Talking about Jesus, right? You and I are called to show, to show wonderful deeds, to display virtues, to display behavior, character, to manifest perfections of Jesus. In other versions of the Bible, it says, all, all this so that you may show to others. So all this, meaning you're set apart, you're special, you're a royal priesthood because there's a reason. Right? It says, all of these so that you may show to others, talking about the world, right? You may show to the world how God called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. It says, show, display, manifest. Your identity in Christ is not meant to be a secret. You're not a secret agent, right? You're not meant to be a secret Christian. So you know, do you think secret Christian? Voila. Okay, good for you, right? We need to show, right? We need to show, we need to display, we need to manifest our Christianity so that what? So that others, the world can see that, right? 
And listen, if, if the only way for the world to know that you are a Christian is because of the t-shirt, the wisdom t-shirt that you wear, or the wisdom umbrella that you carry, or your notebook, we're in trouble. They need to see it in your life. They need to see Christ in your life. There ought to be something about you and I. There ought to be something about you that's different, that's set apart, that's special. I have to say this again. There ought to be something about you that's special, that's set apart, that when someone talks to you, they'll say, Sino yun? Sino siya? Right? Something stood up. I can't pinpoint it, but something, there's something about her, there's something about him. In the way that you talk, in the way that you move, in the way that you express yourself, in the way that you conduct yourself, in the way that you do things, right? You need to portray what? We're talking about excellence. Yes, you need to portray excellence, right? In everything that you say and everything that you do. People who flow in excellence is a minority. Do you, you agree with that? People who flow in excellence is a minority. When you flow in excellence, you stand out. You're set apart. The world looks at you differently when you're excellent. And the world right now believes in the least, least mentality. It's the least, least principle. What do I mean by least, least? It's... For example, in the workplace, an employer pays the least, it pays the least amount of money so that you don't quit. Now, if you're an employee, what you do, well, the world, right, not you guys, what they do is that they do the least so they don't get fired. Now, that's the world. Now, again, the kingdom, the kingdom way is different. The kingdom way is not least, least. Right? The kingdom way is to go beyond. It's to do beyond what's expected of you. You guys are so quiet. I don't know if this is like, am I getting through? Yeah? Yes? And I hope after this conversation, you will learn to value excellence. You learn to see excellence in different light. At least that's my prayer today. So the kingdom way is to go beyond the limits. Right? And you may be thinking, but pastor, I am limited. No. I'm not unlimited, right? Well, I suggest you go and watch the eight foundations again and learn how to be unlimited, right? Say this after me. The God in me causes me to excel. Yes. Because you have the Holy Spirit inside of you. You can't say, uh, I can't do that. Now, let's talk about the opposite of excellence. What is the opposite of excellence? Yes. Unexcellent. <laughs> is that a word? What is the opposite of excellence? Mediocrity. Galing. Yeah, mediocrity. So, let's, let's talk about the opposite of excellence. Mediocrity or the quality of being mediocre. Okay, so, and I looked this up. This is from Google, right? Google says that being mediocre, it means of only moderate quality, not very good. It is a word that describes something ordinary. So it's not extraordinary, right? Being mediocre is ordinary or less than average, it says. So let me ask you, if something is not ordinary, what is it? It's extraordinary. Tama, right? Is there anything in between ordinary and extraordinary? Anyone? Baka hindi ko lang alam. Is there anything in between? Wala. So are you saying that if you're not extraordinary, by default you're ordinary? Right? That's what we're saying here, right? So who here wants to be ordinary? Voila. Who here wants to be extraordinary? Everyone. Definitely we want, right? Ordinary. So, sa bus, yan yung walang aircon. 
Right? Ordinary. Sa halo-halo, yan yung walang leche plan, walang ice cream, walang ube. Tama? Pag sinabing ordinary, yan yung tinapay na walang palaman. Right? Who here wants ordinary? Wala. Dapat wala. Right? Why? You keep on managing food. So if it's a church <laughs> service, it's like a wala church tayo, without merienda at the end. What, what, what? <laughs> That's or. Well, you need to understand. Listen, church. Understand that if you do not flow, and if you do not choose to flow in excellence, by default, you choose to be mediocre. By default. By default, you choose to experience ordinary things. Yun yung pinipili mo. Ordinary na bus, halo-halo, hindi special, tinapay lang. So, mediocre is generally not a positive word, right? Saying that a person or thing or event is mediocre, this is again reading from Google, okay? It says, often suggests that it could be much better with a little more effort. So, a mediocre person is a person who doesn't have the special ability to do something. In our language, sa Tagalog, we use the words, pwede na. Sakto lang. Okay na yan. Right? Pwede na, nakakaraos naman. You guys are very familiar with this. Even Coke is sakto lang. I mean, it's so Pinoy, right? Coke is sakto lang. But listen, I mean, that's... Mindset should not be a mindset of a believer. Mediocrity is a cousin of poverty. They're very close to one another. Poverty is prevalent, and it's very prevalent in our nation, right, in our country. And that's because mainly people are choosing to be okay. Pwede na, sakto lang. It's choosing that kind of life. Understand that again, if you don't choose to be, that if you choose to be ordinary in your ways, you will also experience ordinary things in your life. And you will soon end up in poverty. Because again, as I said, they're cousins. Now again, I'm using the word choosing, right? Choosing. I want to highlight the word choosing because as a believer, and I want to say this, the spirit of excellence is already inside of you. So you can't say, I'm not excellent, because it's already inside of you. It's very possible that it's not shown in your life, right? But it's already inside of you, just like the love of God. You know, when you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, when you were saved, you received the love of God in your life. Now, whether that's showing in your life right now to other people or not, now it depends, right? Right? It depends. So it's the same thing. The same thing with excellence. You need to make a conscious effort, right? You need to choose and show and manifest the love of God, manifest excellence, right? Outside so that people can see it. So that people can see it in your life. It's working in your life. We're called to excel as believers. The Bible says, I can do what? All things through Christ who strengthens me, right? All things. Now, let me talk about the law of sowing and reaping because the law of sowing and reaping is also connected to what we're talking about here, excellence. What does it mean? If you sow excellence, you reap what? Excellence in your life as well. If you choose to be excellent in your ways, you will experience, you will see, you will manifest excellent, extraordinary, superior things in your life. The problem is most people, they want, they wish, right? They want excellence. They wish extraordinary things. They expect superior things in their life, but they don't choose to be excellent. 
Now, God's heart is for each and every one of us to excel, to lead, so that you can go out there in the world, right, and lead. Okay, I'm just going to say this real quick. Have you heard of the seven mountains of influence? So in, in our, you know, if you look around, we have what we call the church, the government, entertainment, media, education, right, families, business. These are the mountains of influence that we're talking about. Now, you know what? Who's leading these mountains right now? Majority is the world, right? Majority is the world. Now, what is God's heart? God's heart is for you and I to excel so that you can get promoted, so that you can lead those mountains, so that you can bring people to His kingdom. You can expand your territory and influence people into His kingdom. That's the purpose. Can I say something about the seven mountains? Yes. Okay. If this is the first time you hear how the seven mountains, this is how our world works. There's this church mountain where we're all under church right now, while the other uh, mountains, such as education, government, entertainment, mm. media, okay? Those are the other mountains. I, I, I don't remember the rest. Mm. But the way the church work was, uh, let's stay here in church, right? We'll talk about God, values, and all that, and then... For some reason, they're expecting, church is expecting the other people, the world, to come to church. But church stays in this particular mountain. How does that work? How's the result? I don't think it's working right now. I don't think it's working either. It should be, we're just in this church mountain. We train based on God's values, the word of God, and to take leaders with excellence to the education mountain where they can influence, the media mountain where and they can make influence, decisions. make decisions in the government. That's how it should be. Mm. Who here has watched uh, Thor, the last Thor movie? Good movie, bad yeah, movie? I didn't like it. Who do Your you son think? Says, yeah, my sons are going like this. Who do you think is influencing Marvel right now? Just look at all the, 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 the just. There's just signs of like, wait a minute, that's wrong, mm -hmm. that's wrong, that's wrong. It's not from the church. Yeah. Now, if you haven't seen the movie, then I can't relate, so. What? If they haven't seen the movie, they can't relate oh, to what I'm saying. Yeah. But I'm saying right now, there's signs of demonic influence <laughs> in, in, uh, in the media mountain right now. You, you, you would know that right now. Yep. That's the purpose. And, and that's why in, in our church, we, we teach people what? How to be successful. How to get promoted how to live an abundant life. Why? It's not just so you can experience that personally, right? But so that you can go out there and influence the world. And you know what? This is why I so love Jepoy's testimony so much. Jepoy, Jepoy. And if you haven't seen his testimony, watch it, right? It's, it's uploaded in our YouTube channel. But I love his testimony. Why? He became the mayor, right? The mayor in the jail. The mayor, and then because of that, he was able to make changes. He was able to make things better that benefited people in the jail. Right? They did Bible studies. They, did, they had worship songs playing in the background, right? Sabi ni Jepo, wala nang sakitan na, wala nang sakitan. They got their hopes renewed because they were doing Bible studies. The environment was completely changed. Why? Because someone who has the Holy Spirit inside of him, right, who set apart, decided to excel. And when he decided to excel, people People saw it, right? Oh, this guy is different. Something is different about this guy. Boto natin to maging mayor. Something is different with him. 
I wonder how many Japoys we have in this auditorium right now. I'm not saying you are Japoy, right? I hope you got what I, what I meant. But I wonder who has the heart to say, I'm going to go out there and show them who a believer is. And not because all that it's for your own, like promotion and benefit and advantage, but so that you can bring people into this place, into church. Excellence is a journey, right? It's not a destination. So striving to be better every single day, that's what excellence is. Excellence isn't just taught, it's also caught. I have to expand on this because you'll never catch the spirit of excellence. You'll never have it in your life unless you esteem excellence, unless you value excellence. So how we value excellence starts in our homes. You know, you see it as examples with, with your parents, right? Or with authorities in your life. Unfortunately, right, um, in most situations, we don't see that in the house in the homes, right? However, when you got saved, right? When you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you have a Father in heaven who gave you that spirit of excellence in your life, inside of you. So you can't say anymore, I don't have that spirit of excellence. It's already inside of you. And again, I said, you'll never catch excellence if you do not esteem or value excellence. You could be in the middle of excellence, Right? You could have people around you that are in excellence. However, if you don't value excellence, you're not going to catch it. Now, let's read 2 Corinthians 3.18. 2 Corinthians 3.18, it says, and let's see who our God is. Because again, he is our model, right? Jesus and all of us as with unveiled face because we continue to behold in the word of God, as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord are constantly being transfigured into his very own image, right? We're constantly being transfigured, changed, transformed, right? Into the image of Jesus in ever increasing splendor and from one degree of glory to another, from glory to glory. For this comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. You know, I hear this a lot from Christian communities. They say, I want to be like Jesus. I want to have the character of Jesus, right? The goal is to be like Jesus. What would Jesus do in a situation? WWJD. You know, they have those things. And it's so like, okay, I know, but what does it really mean to say, I want to be like him? I want to be like Jesus. Psalm 8.1, it says, Lord, our Lord, how excellent, majestic, and glorious is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory, honor above the heavens. It says again, oh Lord, how excellent is your name. You see the character of God in his name. So we have a God who is excellent. Let's look at Isaiah 12, 5. It says, sing praises to the Lord for he has done what? excellent things gloriously let this be made known to all the earth so what does god do again excellent things so how do you know that you are being transformed that you're being changed that you're being transfigured into his image when you do excellent things right Mark 7, 37, it says, And they were overwhelmingly astonished, saying, He, talking about Jesus, right? He has done everything excellently, commendably and nobly. Now again, this is talking about Jesus, right? It's talking about Jesus. What did it say? He has done everything excellently. He even makes the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. Jesus didn't do anything mediocre. Bible says he's done everything excellently. 
Do you want to be like Jesus? Who here wants to be like Jesus? Sana lahat kayo. Right? Then decide to flow in excellence. Flow in excellence. Now let's look at 1 Corinthians 10, verses 31 to 33. It says, so then whether you eat or drink, or whatever you may do, do all for the honor and glory of God. So it says, whatever you do, do everything, do all for the glory of God. And how does this look like, to do everything for the glory of God? How does it look like? It means when you're doing something, you see Jesus standing right next to you looking at what you're doing. Can you imagine that? Are you going to be confident doing what you're doing, knowing that Jesus is there right next to you looking at what you're doing? Or are you going to say, uh, Jesus, pick it kamuna. I'm not proud of what I'm doing right now. Oops. Will he say, well done, my good and faithful servant, when he sees you? Also, if someone is looking at your work, okay, not Jesus, but someone around you is looking at your work, if someone is looking at what you're doing, right, will they say, Glory to God. Glory to God for your life, sister, for your life, brother. Or are they going to say something else? Is God glorified in the things that you do? 32, it says, Do not let yourselves be hindrances or giving an offense to the Jews or to the Greeks, or to the church of God. Do not lead others into sin by your mode of life. Flow in excellence with love. Right? You, don't just, you just don't do excellence without caring for other people. So don't create any offense. Flow in excellence with consideration for others. Now let's move to 33. It says, just as I myself... This is Paul, Apostle Paul speaking, right? I myself strive to please, to accommodate myself to the opinions, desires, and interests of others, adapting myself to all men in everything that I do, not aiming at or considering my own profit or advantage, but that of the many in order that they may be saved. So it says not aiming at or considering my own profit and advantage. You choose to excel not because of your own profit and advantage. Not to get a pat on the back, right? Not to get recognition. Not to get a promotion. Not only when someone is looking at you. This is actually one of the keys, like to know if you're choosing to excel Choosing to excel for men versus choosing to excel for God, right? If you're doing it so that the people around you can say, good job, right? But see, the, the thing is, what happens if they're not looking? What happens is if no one's watching? Are you still going to do the same thing? The Bible says, choose to excel for God, and you know what? When you choose to do that, when your heart is in the right place, the pat on the back, the recognition, the promotion, the increase, they follow. They follow. It's a byproduct. It's a, by, it's a result of your excellence. But the thing is, your heart is in the right place. That's what we're talking about here. Now, excel for God. Choose to do it right even when no one is looking. Do it right even when you're not getting the response that you're expecting. Like right now, I'm speaking here with my own energy 100%. And I see faces sometimes that are kind of sleepy and not getting any response, right? No response. But I'm still doing my best. Woohoo! Woo! <laughs> You I'm know, just another, you guys up. I was saying another example is that so it's so good like excellence is so, just thinking that Jesus is always beside watching you, you watching you. So I was looking at the crowd. 
Some people have their heads nodding down. Some people are looking at their Facebook. Some, I'm like, this is key. If Jesus is watching you right now and your pastor is preaching They're the word. They're writing down notes. No, I saw them on Facebook. Oh. <laughs> and inviting their friends to the next service yes. because of the excellent service. That's what they're doing. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but it's true. You know what? There are days when I don't feel like coming up here and speaking. There are days when I don't feel like doing a power hour for now fate is, right? Even if I have a hundred people or two people show up, I do the right thing. I choose to do the right thing. Because again, I'm not doing it for those two people. I'm doing it for the Lord, right? One example here is our kids, Wisdom Kids. Yeah, you can talk for that. Right? Wisdom kids. You know what? This is, this is very, this is actually an example of excellence right there. They're not listening, but you can watch this. Teachers in the recording. Yeah, you don't know. I don't know what they're doing. A lot of times, actually, I don't know their program, right? I don't know their specific program for the day, right? But how do you know that they're doing things in excellent ways? You see the results, right? You have kids that do not want to miss church, even if the parents want to miss church. Tama ba, mommies, daddies? Tama, right? There are kids who are counting sleeps. How many sleep more? How many more sleep for church for Sunday, right? There are kids who would rather come to church than go to a birthday party. How is that? How is that even possible? Like birthday party? Versus church, kids are choosing to come to church. And I was like, there's something special about this, <laughs> right? It's just so good. But that's, again, look at the results, and you can tell. Is that excellent or not? Now, to excel for God is not to give up. Not to give up on the dreams that God had placed in your heart. You know, sometimes, sometimes you get to a point when you're discouraged, disappointed, and you feel like you're not moving forward, and you've been pushing and pushing. Sabi ni pastora, excellence daw. Okay, excellence, excellence, excellence. But then somehow, in some way, it still doesn't show up, right? But excellence, again, is not quitting. It's doing things that you need to do no matter what the results are. Some people would just give up on their dreams because it's not showing up. I, I've been doing this for three weeks now and it's not showing up in my life, so I'm going to quit. Oh, I've been doing this for six months now and the 500000 a month is not showing up. I'm going to quit. I don't like this anymore. Right? That's not excellence. I just have to honor my husband. No, he is an example of excellence. I've seen what he does, and I see what he does day in and day out. Pounding and pounding and pounding and working on dreams and goals and going from one increase to another. Even though there were discouragements, there were disappointments. That's excellence. When you know the dream that God has placed in your life, excellence is showing up day in and day out and do what you need to do for the Lord. Whether that's, that's not, doesn't have to be church, right? Whether that's in your business, that's in your family, that's in your, church, in your school, right? In your job, whatever that is. Excellence is not given up. Because you know that God has given you a purpose and a calling and a dream that you need to manifest. 
that you need to manifest in your life. First Corinthians 11.1, 1, it says, pattern, then this is again Apostle Paul speaking, right? Pattern yourselves after me. Follow my example as I imitated and imitate and follow Christ the Messiah. Now, this verse came after chapter 10, right? This is chapter 11, verse 1. It came after chapter 10. And what did we talk about in chapter 10? We were talking about glorifying God in everything that we do, right? And so Apostle Paul is saying, follow my example as I imitate Christ and glorify God in everything that I do. Colossians 1, 9 to 10. It says, for this reason, we also, from the day we heard of it, have not ceased to pray and make special requests for you, asking that you may be filled with a full, deep, and clear knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom, in comprehensive insights into the ways and purposes of God, and in understanding and discernment of spiritual things. I'm going to move to verse 10. It says, that you may walk, live, and conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him and desiring to please him in all things. Again, glorifying God, right? In all things, bearing fruit in every good work and steadily growing and increasing in and by the knowledge of God with fuller, deeper, and clearer insight, acquaintance, and recognition. This is a lot of stuff, right? And I'm just giving you a summary of what I want to highlight here. This is saying that we have to live and conduct ourselves, how again? In a manner worthy of the Lord. Fully pleasing to Him, it says, and desiring to please Him in all things. Say this after me. Do things in excellence. Bearing fruit, it says, in every good work. God has called us to excel so that we can be fruitful, right? Increase in all things that we do. Now, in general, and I say in general, because we had this conversation over dinner last night. In general, you cannot have a promotion, right? An increase in your life without being excellent without being excellent in what you do. And it says again in, in the verse that we read, it says steadily growing and increasing in and by the knowledge of God. And again, that's why you're here. That's why you're studying the word because you need to increase in your knowledge of who God is and who you are. Now let's talk about the results of excellence in your life. When you choose to be excellent, what happens? Let's talk about that. If you think of the word excellence, who in the Bible comes to your mind? Can I ask? Sino? Joseph? I like. David. Jesus. Ikaw lang ng ikaw eh. I want to hear everyone. Who else? Paul. Apostle Paul, definitely. He wrote almost half of the New Testament, right? Now, I want to focus and zone into Daniel and David. And I'm going to read to you Daniel 6, 3. It says, Then this Daniel, right, was distinguished above the precedents and the satraps because an excellent spirit was in him. What spirit again? Excellent spirit was in Daniel, and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Because the spirit of excellence was in Daniel, the king planned to make him rule, right? Rule over the entire kingdom. Wow. When you flow in excellence, you gain influence, authority, and what? Massive promotion. That's a massive promotion right there. To rule over the entire kingdom. Now let's talk about David. David. In 1 Samuel chapter 18, so it's one chapter, right? I'm going to read to you three 
ways or three times that the Bible says he behaved or acted himself wisely in all of his ways. David acted himself wisely in all of his ways. In other versions of the Bible, it says he behaved successfully. Now, in the Hebrew word, the word wisely means to be prudent, acting or showing care, to have insight, to have understanding. And again, it says in all of his ways, in everything that he did, David carefully considered his ways. Now, to me, this speaks of excellence, right? This is excellence right here. Now, let's read 1 Samuel 18, verse 5. I'm going to read to you three times here in the same chapter. Verse 5, it says, And David went out wherever Saul went, uh, sent him, and he prospered and behaved himself wisely. And Saul set him over the men of war, and it was satisfactory both to the people and to Saul's servants. Because David, right, behaved himself wisely, say, excellence, he prospered. And what? What else? He was placed in charge of King Saul's army. That's promotion. That's authority, right? Now, verse 14, let's jump there, says, David acted wisely in all of his ways and succeeded, and the Lord was with him. Because again, David acted himself wisely, say, excellence, he was successful, and God was glorified. Now, 30, verse 30, it says, Then the Philistine princes came out to, the, to battle, and when they did so, David had more success and behaved himself more wisely than all Saul's servants, so that his name was very dear and highly esteemed. Now, because David behaved himself wisely, say, excellence, yes, his name was highly esteemed. In other versions of the Bible, it says he became very famous. So church, when you flow in excellence, right, you prosper. You gain authority. You gain influence, right? You're successful. God is glorified in your ways. Your name is highly esteemed. Your great reputation follow you. Who wants those things? Right? Then choose to be excellent. Now, how do you walk in excellence? And I know this is a burning question from you. So, Pastora, how? How do I make sure that I walk in excellence? Great question you have. Let's do this. Let's read Genesis 1, 16 to 18. You know what? In Genesis 1, God spoke so many things, right? Allow me to highlight verses 16 to 18 for now. And it says, when he was creating, right? And it says, and God made the two great lights, the greater light, the sun, to rule the day, and the lesser light, the moon, to rule the night. He also made the stars, and God set them in the expanse of the heavens to give light upon the earth. 18, it says, to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, fitting, pleasant, and he approved it. So God didn't create. In this case, it was the two lights, the sun, the moon, right? He didn't create those things and then right away move on to the next thing. What did he do? He makes sure it's, it's good. He created and then he says, hmm, let me see. Let me check. Right? God inspected what he did. And it says, and God saw that it was good. It was fitting. It was pleasant. And he approved it. God judged his own work. Let's do Genesis, let's read Genesis 1.21. It says, God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves, which the waters brought forth abundantly according to their kinds, and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good, suitable, uh, admirable, and he approved it. 
again, right? God took the time to inspect, to see that everything was done right. The first time. Striving for excellence for you and I is learning to inspect your own work. It's asking yourself a question, what did I do, what did I do today that could be better? Now, if someone else has to continually check on your work, right, and tell you, hmm, it's sloppy, it needs more improvement, right, then you're not striving for excellence. Because, again, you check your work before you show it to other people. So every time God does something, right, and then he says, okay, let me check it out. It's good. Let me check this out. It's good. Let me check this one out. It's good. Right? Now, you also need to check out what you do and what you say. Is it good? Or can you do better? It's checking what you do and what you say. 1 Corinthians 11.31, it says, For if we searchingly examine ourselves, there we go, right? Detecting our shortcomings and recognizing our own condition, we should not be judged and penalty decreed by the divine judgment. Now, in other versions of the Bible, because I, I looked this up and I was like, okay, what does that really mean, right? It says, if we could judge ourselves, if we could inspect our work, right? It says, we would not be judged. In other versions, again, it says, if we were to examine ourselves, we would not be condemned. We need to learn how to continually examine the things that we do. Examine your work and continually wanting to get better. Are you guys still okay? I hope you're being blessed by this. I know it's not a typical word, but I know it's necessary. Whether you are a student in your school, in your job, a businessman in your business, or you're staying at home with your kids, taking care of your kids, your household, right? This applies. I don't think you could be in any place right now that you can say, okay, I don't need excellence right now. Everything. Excellence is applied in everything. Now, of course, the second one that I want to suggest, if you want to strive for excellence, right, is to what? The very first thing, actually, is to decide to esteem, to value excellence in your life. Decide to flow in excellence in everything that you do. I know it's not easy, right? It's, it's not like tonight, in one night, in one day, you're going to be excellent in everything. Right? It's a process, as we said. But hopefully today, you learn to esteem excellence, right? Hopefully today you'll value it. Hopefully you realize that you will never transform. You will never be transformed, transfigured, right? Or change in the image of God if you are not excellent. Hopefully you realize that when you are excellent, you give glory to God. Just like David, it says, you Behave yourself wisely. I want to pray for you today. Can I ask everyone to stand up, please? Can we have the lights turned down, please? I don't know how this message, how you receive this message today. I don't know if that's, it's something that you needed today or... It's something that you already know or something that you're still meditating on. But I want to say again, if you have received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you already have the spirit of excellence inside of you. 
But if you have not received Jesus as your, sa- as your Savior today, to, uh, in your life, right? With all heads down and with all eyes closed. I want to request for all heads down and all eyes closed, please. If you haven't received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want to give you this opportunity today to just say this prayer. I'm going to lead you into prayer and just say this quick prayer and receive that spirit of excellence and everything else that Jesus had died for on the cross. And if that's you, with all heads down and eyes closed, just raise your hands in surrender right now. Just raise your hands in surrender and just surrender your life to the Lord. And say this prayer after me. Say, Father God, I thank you for sending your son Jesus to die for me. And after three days, he rose again. And because of that, I receive forgiveness of all of my sins. And I now walk in divine health. I walk in abundance in every aspect of my life. Jesus, I thank you for coming into my life. From this day forward, I declare, I declare that you are my Lord and you are my Savior. I dedicate and surrender my life to you. In your name I pray, amen. Now for all of us, for all of us, if you have chosen to maybe settle in your job, in your career, in your business, Settle maybe in your relationships with people. Maybe you have chosen to even settle in your health, in the situation of your body. Maybe you've said at one point, you said, Pwede na, nakakaraos naman. If you have settled in one way or another, I'm going to lead you to a prayer. Say this prayer after me. Father God, forgive me for settling, for tolerating the puede na in my life. Forgive me, Father, for cooperating with the spirit of mediocrity, for accepting the average and below average in my finances, in my relationships, in my body, and in all the works of my hands. Forgive me, Father, for doing things to please man, not to please you. Forgive me, Father, for my idleness, for my laziness, for my procrastination, for my passivity. Forgive me, Father, for not stepping up to do more so that I can bring your kingdom into where you placed me. Father, I receive your forgiveness today. I receive what Jesus had paid for on the cross 2,000 years ago. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Again, keep your, your heads down and your eyes closed. Allow me to pray for you all. Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you today for cleansing us all. Lord, thank you today for for our righteousness, that we are righteous in your sight. Lord, right now, I close the doors right now in every person that is here tonight and in, in their families as well and those who are going to be watching. I close the doors to every spirit of mediocrity in our lives in Jesus' name. I close the doors to passivity, I close the doors to idleness, to delay and stagnation in their finances, to delay and stagnation in every breakthrough that they're, they're, they're um, hoping for, Lord God. I close the doors to poverty, to laziness and procrastination. I close the doors to complacency in their lives right now in Jesus' name. I pray for that spirit of excellence right now. 
the spirit of excellence to be activated right now in this church in every single person in this church in their families as well in every work that they create in everything that they touch with their hands i just i speak I speak increase and acceleration in everything that they do in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. The spirit of excellence is activated in your life right now in Jesus' name. You know what? Let's pause for a minute. And I know the spirit of mediocrity could be rooted in you not really seeing excellence in your life while you were growing up, right? There was, there was no model. There was no one in your life showing excellence. Maybe you didn't see that in your dad or in your father or um, any spiritual head of your family. Or maybe you didn't have a father figure, you know, showing, growing up. Or it may be from some hurts or some unforgiveness that you have against your parents maybe or some authorities in your life. Now, if that's you, if that's you today, if any of these things apply to you, right? If any of the things that I mentioned apply to you, say this prayer after me. Lord, I lift up to you every hurt, every unforgiveness, that I'm carrying against my dad, my papa, my tata, against my parents, and against the authorities in my life. Lord, I lift up to you my disappointments, my discouragements, and I release forgiveness to them in Jesus' name. Let's do this. Let's declare this for everyone, okay, for everyone. Say this prayer after me. Lord, I lift up to you everything else that is stopping me from moving forward, from advancing in my life. Whatever attitude that the enemy has planted in me that's making me not to excel, let it and then you'll start to see how the spirit of poverty and lack starts to break in your life. And part of it is understanding the holy tithe. So today I'm going to talk about the holy tithe. Let's start with um, Malachi 3, 6, 7. Can I have that verse? Okay. So we're going to start with Malachi. I usually start with Malachi 3, 8, 3, 10, but I went backwards. We're going to start 3, 6. Malachi 3, 6 says, For I am the Lord. I do not change. That's key. The Lord does not change. That is why you, O sons of Jacob, are not consumed. Even from the days of your fathers, you have turned aside from my ordinances and have not kept them. Okay, so the Lord is speaking to the Israelites. He says, return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. Then the Israelites say, but you say, how shall we return? Anong pinagsasabi nila? Anong return to me, return to you? Right? You know when I speak Tagalog, I sound different. No, don't speak Tagalog, right? <laughs> it says, okay, so God's command to return indicates that the nation of Israel needed to stop doing what they are currently doing. What is that? They're turning their backs away from God in this scripture. And notice, it is the people who had to do the returning first before God returned to them. So it starts with you. You return to the Lord, and the Lord will return back to you. God will always return back to you. But most people of the world don't go back to God, and that's why it happens. So the Israelites ask, but how do we return to you, Lord? And, of course, God answered them. Can you go on to the next verse? He said, so Israel goes, how do we return to you? And look what God says. Will a man rob or defraud God? 
Yet you rob and defraud me, but you say, in what way do we rob and defraud you? You have withheld your tithes and offering. So, so out of all the ways for, uh, for the people of Israel to return back to God, God didn't say, pray, give me 24, 42, or 48, 70 hours of prayer. He didn't say that. He didn't say, you know what, just... Uh, you know, do more work, do more work, do more work unto me. No, he said, return to me by bringing your tithes and offerings. If we don't change in this area of giving, we may as well forget about returning to God because our wallets, our money, will stop us. A lot of times the money becomes our God. We work for money, we do everything for money. And then, then, you, then you're wondering, how come there's a curse of poverty? How come we're not getting ahead? Because you don't understand what the Lord says, what the kingdom says. God does not want part of us. He wants all of us, including our money, which is, by the way, not our money. If you understand this principle, kingdom principle, we are just stewards of his money. Nothing belongs to us. You agree? Two people agreed. Everybody says, <laughs> no. do you agree? Nothing belongs to us. It says in Christ's scripture, we came to earth with nothing, we will leave with nothing. Everything we have here is the Lord's. There's also scripture on that. And what are the consequences then of robbing God? Anybody want to know? Two people want to know. <laughs> Anybody wants to know what the consequences are? Okay. That's why we study this. It says, next verse. Malachi 3.9, he says, You are cursed with a curse, for you are robbing me, even this whole nation. If you study this, I was like, wait a minute. I am cursed with a curse? Does that mean God cursed me? Yes? No, God did not curse you. You cursed yourself. Because it is your choice to rob God. Okay? What curse? Well, if you look at the book of Deuteronomy, there are 17 curses of poverty. How many? 17 of these curses of poverty. Do you want 17 poverty curses? Somewhere, you know, uh, statistics say, uh, I've been reading and I've been studying, and they say somewhere between 5 to 15% of Christian believers tithe. 5 to 15%. Tithe. When they say tithe, I would believe that they actually give the entire tithe, which is 10%. That means if we have 100 people here, only 5 will give the full tithe. Or maybe 10, average. Is that, that, seems, is that uh, amazing or does that sound like, wow, ganun ba kalit? Or do you know that already? So even if we assume the larger numbers, such as... Uh, you know, the 15%, it still means 85% of Christians place themselves under the curse of poverty by not tithing, assuming you believe the Word of God. Do you believe the Word of God? My pastor, Celeste, says she does. Do you believe the Word of God? That's why we study the Word of God. This is hard to take, honestly, because this is not from the world. I had to meditate on this and study this over and over and say, oh, Old Testament lang yan. It doesn't apply to us. Now we're in the New Testament, right? Who believes that? A lot of Christian churches do. But if you study the New Testament about tithing and offering, you will discover that it did not end in the Old Testament. It actually went to the New Testament and it is still the same today. Out of the 17 curses of poverty, in addition, there are 53 curses in Deuteronomy 28. Those additional 53 curses is sickness. Can I say sickness? So poverty and sickness. Do you want 53 curses of sickness? Parang after your excellence, parang gloom and doom. I just want to make you, I just want you to understand the, the gravity. Because when God says you're robbing him, it's like robbing him and to return to him. His answer is the tithe and offering. And that made no sense to me. Why the tithe and offering out of everything? Why not prayer? It's so easy to just pray, right? God loves his children and wants them to prosper. But Christian believers are simply experiencing the consequences of a kingdom law. That's it. 
they curse themselves by robbing God. Next verse. So we're going through all Malachi right now. So he says next, bring all the tithes, how much? All the tithes, the whole tenth of your income. Whole tenth? Lucky, gross, bayan or net? I have a business, is it net? Bad thinking, bad heart, right? We'll talk about that in a future, uh, in a future sermon. But in, in, he says, bring all the tithes to where? The storehouse. What is the storehouse? Typically, the storehouse is your local church. So if this is your church, this is your storehouse. It is where you are fed by the Word of God. It is where you, are, you get filled with the Word of God, where you get blessed with the Word of God. That's your storehouse. Unfortunately, some give their tithes to churches where they're just not being fed. I, don't, I think money is more spiritual. If you're going to a church and you don't feel fed and then you just give your tithes, I'm not so sure about that. It feels like you're in what we call a dead church. A church should encourage you with the Word of God, should give you power, should give you, should give you inspiration, ideas, how to live life. Okay? This might make sense. For the purpose that there may be food in my house, and prove me now by it, says the Lord of the hosts. Did you know that this is the only scripture that the Lord says, prove me now? In other version, it says, test me in this. And it has something to do with money and the tithe. I think our God knows how much we are so hold, held on to money and the spirit of mammon. Have you guys tested the Lord? We've, we've tested the Lord on this. When, he's, when I first heard about this and read this many, many years ago, and we were struggling financially, I said, she did everything I can by the world, right? All the knowledge, all the, all the, uh, you know, the information from the world, might as well do it God's way. Unfortunately, a lot of Christians do it that way. Might as well do it God's way because I can't figure it out anymore. Why not do it correct the first time? Anyway, on the side note, it says, His promise, if you test me now in this, if I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. What are the windows of heaven? I don't have the verse. It's somewhere in... Exodus? Genesis? Somewhere. It's the one on, based on Noah. I don't have that verse, but I know there's new people here, and it's probably not the first time you want to hear this. The windows of heaven came from, uh, the very first time it was mentioned was in the days of Noah, when the Lord says he will flood and destroy the earth, and he will open the windows of heaven, that there will be so much rain pouring and pouring and pouring, where pretty much the highest point on the earth was about a mile below the rain. These are big windows. This is rain. This is a blessing, but in this case, it's a, it, it was a curse to destroy. But anyway, that's the windows of heaven. To pour out a blessing. The word tithe, by the way, it it's, it's came from the Hebrew word maser or maser. Anybody speaks Hebrew? Is it maser or maser? No one does. So I'm going to call it maser. Maser, it means the tenth part. It says here the whole tent. Okay? How much? Tent part. Okay? It's amazing though that that tent seems so big, but when you do it because you love the Lord and you just give it back to Him because it's holy as an offering, you won't miss it from experience. A lot of times, more comes. How can you give more and more comes back? It makes no sense mathematically. It does because it's the word of God and he speaks the truth. So test him in this. So now you see in one verse, 310, that when you bring the tithe, you get a blessing. You tithe, you get a blessing. This is actually uh, in our uh, eight foundations of an abundant life about the tithe, the, the tithe and the blessing exchange. You cannot separate the tithe with the, from the blessing. No tithe no blessing. The tithe belongs to God, period. That is not optional. So here's a question. How many Christians do you know who are asking God to bless them? They say, bless me. Lord, I need blessing. More blessings from you, Lord. But the, on the side, they are not consistent or faithful tithers. 
It makes no sense. If God is never changes and his word, his word holds true no matter, word, no matter what, then blessing comes from the tithe according to Malachi 3.10. Right? Do you agree, church? Okay. Wow, the, the enthusiasm is just so overwhelming. I'm being sarcastic, by the way. <laughs> Let's go to Malachi. Let's end the Malachi verses. Malachi 3.11. And, and 12. So, next he says another promise. So he'll pour out a blessing according to Malachi 3.10 and I will rebuke the devourer, insects and plagues for your sakes. And he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine drop its fruit before the time in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And all the nations shall call you happy and blessed, for you shall be a land of delight, says the Lord. I, want to, I highlighted that, uh, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. What does that mean? Does money in your life right now seem to flow out faster than it comes in? Do you always seem to have unexpected expenses? Nasirang koche, nasirang cell phone, nasirang toilet, nasirang... Shoes, like all together, all at once. You know, you know, this church, church, listen to me. When that happens over and over and over, stop. That's not normal. There is a curse. There is some sort of spirit devouring right now. Don't say, oh, normal lang yan. No, it's not normal. We are children of God. We have an inheritance. That should not happen to us. Right? So what's happening? That's when the devourer is stealing the fruits of your labor. It's the devourer. What's the devourer? The enemy, the devil, is stealing the works of your hands. Money is flowing out too much, too much, much faster than coming in. How can you stop the devourer? By being faithful with your tithes and offerings. Your faithfulness allows God to move on your behalf and rebuke the devourer. I'm going to end with uh, Leviticus. Next verse. Leviticus 27.30. The Lord says that all the tithe, how much? All of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It is holy to the Lord. Church, the tithe never belonged to us. It never will. You remember in Malachi 3.6? Malachi 3.6 says, remember, God does not change. It says in Malachi 3.6. Therefore, returning the tithe to God brings us out from the curse of poverty and sickness and places us under the windows of heaven, the blessings from the windows of heaven so that there's enough rain to pour onto your seed, which is the offering, which is what I talked about last week. Does this make sense, church? Notice this verse also says that the tithe is holy to the Lord. If God considers the tithe holy, then we should consider it holy as well. Do you see that? Okay. I went longer than usual because you gave me 30 minutes. <laughs> okay, so uh, right now what I want to do is uh, everybody should have one of these. Okay, who doesn't have an envelope? Please raise your hand so that our ushers can give you an envelope. This is your opportunity to honor the Lord your God with the tithe. Now, if... This is your church. The tithe comes to this church. If you are a visitor or you're, this is your Bible study and you go to another church, the tithe does not come to this church. It goes to your church. Does that make sense, church? <laughs> okay. Now, uh, what I want you to do, if this is your church, can you put down your name? And the reason being because we are getting tithes and we don't know where it's coming from. It's a, it's a way for us to track, oh, yes, they consider Wisdom Church as their church. Oh, no, they're just a visitor. This is for tracking purposes. So if this is your church and you're going to give the tithe and return the tithe, please put your name. Now, 
There are four steps to receiving a harvest. So we're talking about tithe. The harvest comes from your offering. What is an offering? How is it identified? Well, first of all, what is the harvest you want? So on the flap of this right now, I think a lot of you know already, you can write down the re request, the harvest you are looking for this year. What is the harvest that you're looking for? What is the desire that God has placed in your heart? Let's take a moment and just listen to the Lord. Don't, it can't be fleshly desires, by the way. You know, how do you know that this is the desire? Because you can't stop thinking about it. And it makes you feel good. And it lines up to the word, like, Lord, you said that you're going to bless the work of my hands. This business, I, I can't think, stop thinking about it. So maybe that's it, a business. Maybe it's more, more, more clients. Maybe it's more sales. Maybe it's buying a piece of property. Maybe it's rebuking the devourer because all of my money is going to hospital expenses. I want healing now, Lord. Okay, maybe it's restoration of marriage. Write that down. Please do not leave it blank. If you cannot identify the harvest, then nothing comes back. Number two, with every harvest, there needs to be the right seed. The seed, the offering, never comes from me. It will never come from a minister, a friend. It, it doesn't make sense because the right seed only comes from the Lord. Ask the Holy Spirit right now, Lord, what seed? What is the right seed? It needs to be an exact seed by the way. You cannot give less. That's not the exact seed. You cannot give more. That's not the exact seed. What is the right seed? It's what the Lord tells you. This is a practice of trusting the Lord and obeying. Whatever that is, ask the Lord what the seed is. It's between you and God. Lord God, I pray for everyone right now to hear from you. I rebuke the schemes of the enemy who's trying to steal the word therefore trying to steal their harvest right now in the name of Jesus. Take your hand and put it right here in your spirit, not here in your mind, which is actually different. Ask the Lord, what is the right measure of seed? What is the exact seed? And if you don't know, do not throw money in the bucket. My advice, take it back with you and spend time with the Lord and ask. This is not like, oh, I got to go now. No, 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 no. That's not how it works. You know when you're rushed, by the way? That's not the Lord. Just as a general guideline. When you feel anxious, that's not the Lord. You should have peace that you know, that you know, that you know. And then you sow it. The next step is to obey the leading of the Holy Spirit. Can you pass the, the baskets? Okay. When the baskets are coming by, I want you to sow the seed. Don't just throw it. How do you do that? I'll give you an example. Lord, yeah, while the basket, I believe your word. I'm sick and tired of being broke. Therefore, rebuke the devourer for my sake as I give back the holy tithe to you. I am just repeating what the Lord says to me, right? That I'm believing. And this offering right now, I know this harvest right now. And today, I know that I heard from you correctly. As I sow this seed of offering, I worship you, Lord. I thank you that this harvest is on its way. I thank you that it's going to come this year. When you sow, you give thanks to the Lord, church. That's where faith comes in because you are expectant. Make sense? Sow your seeds and do not throw. <laughs> Is there someone else? <laughs> okay. Now, if you are, uh, a lot of you uh, that actually uh, give tithes and offering online, the bank accounts are actually in the back of this, and it's also shown on the screen as well. It's shown on the screen as well. The power of my words, right? Uh, right now, it's under uh, Pastor Salah's name because our church, uh, we're actually going through BIR and LGU now. Right? 
we passed SEC already. So we're in a BIR and LGU. And once it goes through that, then we gave a go signal to transfer all of these accounts, which are separate accounts, straight to directly to Wisdom Church of Manila. And then every then I will be under Wisdom Church of Manila. Let me pray over the, the ties. Can you extend your hands, Lord, uh, everybody? Lord God, I thank you, Lord, for just the opportunity for instructions, for the word we heard today of excellence. We give you our work, Lord, the, the works of our hands, Lord, as our tithe and offering to honor you, Lord, to worship you, Lord. I know the tithe and the offering is holy. It's holy unto you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that this church is a tithing church. I thank you, Lord, for the harvest that you have placed in every church member. I thank you, Lord, that they hear you properly on how to sow, where to sow, and how much to sow, or whatever else to sow, Lord. Lord, you said that Two or, you, two or more people pray together that you're here. As I touch these tithes and offerings, I give an anointing of increase in every member's lives right now, whether it's an increase in their finances, increase in abundant health, restoration right now, whatever it is in the hearts of our members right now, I pass on this anointing right now as we give to you the holy tithe and offering. Lord, we lift everything up to you. I thank you, Lord, for our harvest. I thank you, Lord, for your protection. I thank you, Lord, for protecting us against the devourer. I thank you, Lord, for the blessings upon blessings that's shown over our church and every single family in this church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Okay, so uh, what I want you to do now, uh, this is actually something that uh, Pastor Celeste and I were talking about. We want to develop, um, we, we actually have um, strong belief. Do you guys um, watch the fruit of your mouth? Who was here for the fruit of your mouth? That's one of the base, the solid foundations of our faith is what Ever we declare according to God's will and according to his word is what comes back to us. Therefore, can I ask everybody to stand as we do uh, declarations on, can I have the declarations, the declarations, confessions and declarations for favor and an abundant life. It's actually these declarations. So I'm just thinking, well, if you guys don't really do this, at least we do it once a week in our church, right? as a community. Can I have the declarations, please? There we go. Confessions for favor and an abundant life. First verse, or first declaration. Church, repeat after me. The Lord will open the heavens, the storehouse of his bounty, to send rain on my land and season, and to bless all the works of my hands, I will lend to many nations, but will borrow from none. As the righteousness of God, I declare that I am favored in God's sight through Jesus Christ. I am blessed and highly favored, and I associate with those who are blessed and highly favored so that I may increase in every area of my life. I operate in integrity. As a result, I obtain favor from God. The Lord takes pleasure in my prosperity. Because I am God's favorite, I prosper in every area of my life, spiritually, physically, financially, socially, and mentally. Wealth and riches are in my house because I am empowered by God's grace and favor to acquire wealth so that he may establish his covenant in the earth. As I continue to sow the seeds God directs, my harvest begins today. Who received that? Amen, amen, amen. Let me pass on a blessing. Uh, Lord God, I thank you, Lord, for today's service as I release the church and family members for this next, this coming week. Lord God, we claim, Lord, as in John 10.10, 10, that uh, you rebuke the enemy who tries to steal, steal our finances, kills our body, and destroys our relationships, Lord. And we claim and we declare again that you came, Lord Jesus Christ, so that we may have life and have it more abundantly. Therefore, I declare and pronounce favor. Uh, your grace, unmerited favor from every aspect of your life. Everybody will see that they are favored and want to do business with them. Everybody they run into, they will see that healing comes from them. Everybody will have an anointing of increase when they're in their presence, Lord. Lord, this is my declaration for this church as I release this church for this coming week. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen and amen.